Joe DiGuardi was born and raised in the Bronx, New York, and moved to Westchester in 1957, who graduated from Fordham Prep and Fordham University. Joe ran for the U.S. Congress in 1984, and then served from 1985 to 1989 in the, House, in the U.S. House of Representatives. Joe has worked for the Military Justice for African American War Heroes since 1987, and is responsible for getting nine medals of honor, and he continues to work on getting our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor for Dory Miller, who served at Pearl Harbor, died in action in 1943. Please welcome Joe G. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, Mayor Rainey, thank you. Uh, Dwayne Jackson, thank you for your service. And uh, Superintendent Mauricio, thank you. You know, sometimes God gives you uh, a mission that you can't turn down. And I was lucky to be elected as a U.S. Congressman in 1984 in a district that was dominated by the other party. Not easy to do in Westchester County. And I inherited a very large African-American population. That's Mount Vernon, New York. You know what that is. It's no longer in the Westchester Congressional District. It's now part of the Bronx. Every 10 years, they change the lights. And, some, and many times, it's just arbitrary politics. Not right. But when I was there, I got a, vi I got a visit, first of all, from a military historian, African American, Dr. Leroy Ramsey. And he says, Joe, I need to come to see you because I had Governor Cuomo send letters to 34 congressmen from New York State. In those days, we had 34. I just have to see you because you were the only one to answer the letter that I drafted for Governor Cuomo to send to these 34 members, 17 Democrats, 17 Republicans. I said, well, you know, I get a lot of letters, Dr. Ramsey. Why don't you come to my office in White Plains and let's go over this and I'll have one of my staff people there and let's see what we can do to follow up. So he came to my office and he uh, said, Joe, in that letter, I said, I want you to repeat everything in front of my staff. In that letter, I said, that in World War I and World War II, 1,550,000 black Americans, African Americans served, and not one, not one got our nation's highest award, the Medal of Honor. By the way, it's not Congressional Medal of Honor. It has its own title, the Medal of Honor. And it just seems to me that this has to be corrected. I says, well, Dr. Ramsey, I'm a CPA, and those numbers don't add up. How could we have a million five hundred fifty thousand Americans serve and not one get our nation's highest award? He said, well, did you know there was segregation in World War One and World War Two? I said, well, I have a pretty good education, and no one ever told me that. And I said, this is incredible to me, and this is something we got to look at. So, knowing that. A junior member of the minority party, and that's what I was at the time, was not going to make much headway. I went to a good man. He was the chairman of the <coughs> Black American Caucus from Texas, Mickey Lee. You may not remember him, but this was an unusual person. He started the Hunter Committee in Congress, he was from Texas, Houston. And when I went to see him, and he had asked me to do him a favor, when I first got there, we were put in to fight each other, and we didn't fight each other. We agreed on most everything. His district in Houston was like my district in Westchester. Some of the richest people in America, and some of the poorest. And he needed me to help him, because my president, your president at that time, Ronald Reagan, put in an executive order to eliminate food stamps, which would have really been hurtful to my district, Mount Vernon, Yonkers, Rochelle. And nobody, no Republican would join him. I said, Becky, I know who you are, and if you need me, I'm going to do it. So I did it. Imagine this unbelievable person dying two years later, delivering food and medicine to Ethiopia when there was a drought, people were starving, 17 members, uh, 17 people on a plane, half of them from uh, members of Congress, their staff, but he was the only congressman. The plane went down in Ethiopia. He's now a hero to the Ethiopians uh, for what he did. So I feel, I felt 
after this. So we put in a bill, all right, to open the statute of limitations for two people. Because I went to him because we had one in New York State, Dr. Ramsey was looking for, and that was uh, Henry Johnson. And Henry Johnson was from World War I, and he was a, an unbelievably brave guy. You'd have to read his citation, it's on the information, and I had to see what he did. It was incredible. The congressman told me, you know, I have somebody in Texas. If I do this with you, and I want to do it with you, we got to include Dory Miller. And he told me the story about Dory Miller. I said, that's incredible. I said, let's add him so that we put in this bill to open up the statute now, five-year statute, for two people, Dory Miller and Henry Johnson. And that's what we did. Well, he died two years after we did that. And to make a long story short, I've been carrying this on in his memory since then. And I can't quit. I, I morally can't quit until we get this medal because that's the one he wanted to begin with. So read the stuff that is out here if you haven't gotten it from the front so you can see why this is a good cause. But Dory Miller is such an unusual person that the Navy needs to do something. It was difficult to deal with the Army, but we did that in nine cases. And no one had gotten one before I became a U.S. Congressman. And thank you. The last one, you may recall, was President Barack Obama. He was invited to the White House. It was June 4th, uh, 2015. Uh, I got Senator Schumer to weigh in with me. He assigned a staff person, and we created two additional files. You can't get these things changed unless you can show there's additional facts, additional proof. We now know there's additional proof. I'm not going to announce it here, but uh, I've engaged a military historian who's an expert on Dory Miller, working on his 20 years, Tampa, Florida, and uh, he's now convinced me we have what we need to go forward. So it wasn't just the fact that he went upstairs and got that machine gun. There were other things that he did that have never been recorded because of racism in World War II, especially the defense secretary. His name was Knox, one of the most racist people you could find. Dory Miller would have been the first person to get an award in World War II, maybe. Maybe, no, probably the whole World War, first one. But he refused to do it because he didn't want to see, and I've been reading this, black American get the first award. So, after the heroic acts were performed, he decided that he would only give a letter of commendation based on the after-action report. You cannot get a medal or anything unless somebody on that ship, a witness, files an after-action report. It's usually the commander, but he died in action. That's when Dory Miller pushed him aside, and he died shortly thereafter. So then another lieutenant became the witness and reported on what Dory Miller had done. But believe it or not, that was classified. And they told Dory Miller that he should not speak about this. And it was only after he died in 1943 that files started to come out. And recently, more information was coming out. But this was racism at its height when someone said that we can't recognize this war hero because he is black. Now, he got the commendation. There was such a hue and cry because so many people witnessed what he did with the gun. And some witnessed the other things I'm going to expose on Martin Luther King's Day next year. Because next year is the year I hope to get this, this medal, finally. But the witnesses who saw what he had done, uh, they, they just yelled and screamed about it to the point where Admiral Nimitz himself had to weigh in. This is the guy that's the admiral of the entire Navy and just ordered the, the highest medal for the Navy, which is the Navy Cross, to be given to Dory Miller. And it wasn't long after that that he was then given a stamp, a U.S. stamp, with his face on it, much like that picture there. Why not our highest military award, the Medal of Honor? It's not really a Navy. It is. Every armed service has the ability to issue that, but it's got to then be given by the president. But you've got to make the case. Now for Henry Johnson, we had to file two more volumes. It 
took four years for Senator Schumer and his staff to do it. He was with me in the House on this, and I asked him to come back in, and, and now that he was a senator, to do it. And it prevailed, okay? By the way, the first medal was issued in 1991, and I was invited to the White House by George H. W. Bush. At that time, Colin Powell was sitting a few seats away from me, and it was really an honor. But that was Corporal Freddie Stowers that I, I never even heard of. But in our study, in our research, we found out that he was overlooked. And no one had ever weighed in on his application. So therefore, the president said that no bill needed, was needed, that the statute had never closed on him. And Joe, would you come down to the White House? Well, welcome to the White House. And I salute the Vice President, Mrs. Quayle, and Secretary Cheney, other members of our cabinet, and General Vono, and distinguished members of Congress who are with us today, and uh, former Congressman Joe Diagardi. I'm especially glad uh, Joe's with us here today. Today, Corporal Freddie Starris becomes the first black soldier honored with a Medal of Honor from World War I. He sought and helped achieve the triumph of a of right over wrong, he showed, as this year has proved again, that an inspired human heart can surmount bayonets and barbed wire. 73 years ago, the corporal first was recommended for a Medal of Honor, but his award was not acted upon. In 1987, then Congressman Joe Diogardi and uh, my friend, the late Mickey Leland, known to many here from Houston, discovered the Stowers case while conducting other research. And the Army took up the case. And last November, the secretaries of the Army and Defense recommended that Corporal Stowers receive the Medal of Honor. So what, what about the Dory Medal? I don't think they're going to be able to stop that medal from being issued next year when I get through it. I'm very determined when I start something. And as you can see now, it's 30 years that I've been working on this, not constantly, but every now and then I'm able to do something to keep it alive. And this year, I managed to get a big to-do in San Diego where there's a big Navy base, uh, Dory Miller Day. And then in Chicago, a few weeks ago, uh, we had a Dory Miller Day, and here we have one today. Just trying to keep that flame alive long enough so that we can light it up. It's like spark plug, you know. But you need support. And that's why I appreciate what uh, Mark McDonald is doing with the Black Diamonds. I was here last year, not in this room, but in another one, where we started the first petition for this. So I'm very happy, Martin, that you're continuing this, that the Black Diamonds are continuing it. And uh, there's nothing more that I should say at this point except to keep working on it, which I'm going to do, and I appreciate that you're all here. Thank you very much. Dory Miller was working in the kitchen aboard the USS West Virginia when the Japanese attacked. In fact, he remembered that many of his men were still friends, were still down below. And without getting into all the, the support, I'll tell you that he didn't give up. He went back and forth to get people on that deck away from the fumes and, and away from the fact that the ship could have flipped. Actions that were not in his job description, heroic but not recognized with a Medal of Honor. A million. 550,000 African Americans, Black Americans, served in World War I and World War II, but not one at our nation's highest military honor. Former Congressman Joe DiGuardi has been working on securing these medals for years. Miller's would be the 10th if approved. Black Medals of Honor for war heroes who were denied. And joining in the fight to award Miller the Medal of Honor, Peekskill High School students who look up to him as a hero. If I had a hat on, I would take off my hat. I would show my respect to him. I would stand up straight, look him in the eye, shake his hand, tell him what a great job he's done. But instead, this group of black diamonds are canvassing, asking people to sign a petition. They commemorated their efforts so far on Saturday, the anniversary of that tragic day. The petition, along with evidence uncovered in an internal investigation, will be sent over to the Navy for review. The group hopes Miller will officially earn the Medal of Honor by sometime next year. In Peekskill, Sabrina Franza, News 12.